Hello everyone and welcome back to AK Academy and Planner App version 2. We are in the session number 39 and this is the session where we are going to implement a global error handler. We are going to see how we can implement that and um, like handle all the exceptions that could happen within our application globally from a single endpoint without the need every, for every exception to handle it in the same way. So in .NET 6, Microsoft presented what's called an error boundary which is basically we are not going to use that for today but error boundary is something that allows you instead of showing that yellow line at the bottom of the page to say that hey there is an exception error boundary is actually handling the exception in a different way and it gives you the ability to to to, to control what how the ui is going to look like so we are not going to cover that maybe i'm going to write a blog post or to make a something different about that but you're going to follow a different strategy which is like a little bit more customized and it's going to be used for our exception that we arise within the application uh, error boundary what what it's doing it, it's actually catching every exception like you know in blazor app whenever any error happens you, sh you see that yellow stripe at the bottom of the page uh, error boundary like actually ignoring that and handle the error in a different way but we are gonna do something a little bit different today we are going to leverage the power of uh, cascading parameters to create a global error handler and then we can make that error handler available for every component so what's going to happen for every error you know in our application if i go to components for example i, I will open up plans and i will go to plans list so over here as you can see we have two types of exception almost every page like the api exception which actually Whenever we send the data, maybe the API like doesn't like this request for, for some reason, like um, you are not authorized or, or for any reason that's actually the cause of this error is the user and it's not the client or you are accessing something that's not found or and so on. This errors, the, actually this is not an error, this is a way of like there is something wrong, please fix that and this is the issue. But there is some different cases that we, it's out of our control somehow, like what, what if the internet went down after he sent in a request, like the response won't come and we're not able to reach the server or the server won't able to reach us. So in that case, an error will throw up or like a timeout exception. Uh, like we are referencing, actually there is a programmatical error, like we are referencing, a, let's say, a null object and we will get the uh, instance not set an instance of object. And many kind of exception that could throw within our journey that actually we have to catch that properly. And what we are doing right now, every place we say log this error. So in this kind of error, it's not the programmatical error. This is like a business error, we can say. Like this is a flow that doesn't satisfy our business requirements. But in reality, like nothing wrong with that. Like you send a request and to accessing and not existing resource. But programmatical error or something thrown like error from a library or things like that, those needs to be handled and to be logged. And we shouldn't show that message to the user like as it is, like, hey, object reference is not set to an instance of object. Oh, wow, like what is this? The user shouldn't see that. So what we do is like we show him a message, something went wrong, please try again later, and we log that error. Like we, we put it in the browser, we send it to application insights, we send it to the server. Um, you handle that some way. But instead of to do that, which is the second thing that I'm going to do is in every catch, we need to do that, right? Like to show that message, something went wrong and send that error to the server. Okay, that makes sense. But for every catch, I need to do that. Like, does this make sense? And what if I want to change how I handle this error? Like instead of sending them to the server, I want to send them directly to application insights. I should go for every exception and do that. Of course, no. So we will follow like a little bit a track using the cascading parameters to do that. For this example, what we are going to do to catch the exceptions, whenever an exception happens, we will be showing uh, just what's called a snack bar. So this is the Mud Blazor. This is the new fresh website. Congratulations for them for that. Actually, they deserve it. We have a component over here called uh, snack bar. And if I open the snack bar component, here we go. So for example, I click over here and you see this. A green like little pop-up or toast that shows somewhere in the screen and we will just show that like we say something went wrong and we store that error for now we are putting it in the console but you can do whatever uh, you want with that so <clears throat> basically uh, we will show it of course over here and 
yeah, I'm gonna take this one. So let's open the code, show code, and we will be taking uh, this piece of code. So to get started, this is just showing you the component, giving you a brief introduction about what we are going to do, and let's get started right now creating the component. So in the shield over here, I will create a new component called error, razor component, and it's called error, just like that. Error, add. So this component is going to be provided for all the children. Like we will put it in the app.razor and then all the children have access for this one. So I will remove this. And to make this available as a cascading parameter for the children, I use the cascading, cascading value, value equal this, which is the current object. And just like that. And here we put the child content, like the other component will go over here. So we have to create that parameter of type render fragment. I will create the code behind file. Okay, that's cool. And from over here, I will create a parameter. Public render fragment child content. Okay, so this will be filled with the content of other components. Now, what we need is actually to create that error handler that will be available to all the children from this object. So I will call public void handle error and it's taking exception ex as a parameter so this is all what we need so now this is the single entry or the single method that's going to handle all the exception that's available for us throughout the system so here we can do whatever you want so we want to show a fragment uh, sorry a snack bar with the with that red and say something went wrong and we will log that exception with all details for now in the console but as i've said you can do whatever you want with it so to show a snack bar, we should inject public i snack bar, snack bar, things like that. So let's show that snack bar actually. Snack bar. Let's go to more blazer. And we will use the filled one. Snack bar dot configuration configuration of variant equals variant dot field, which gives us like this pure green uh, one. No, like this is the field one. Yeah, we will use this and you will use this error one. So, what you're gonna do is say snack bar dot add something went wrong. Please try again later. And then the severity is dot error. Yeah, like that. And right now we are going to log the error. For now, we are just going to show it in the console. ex dot message. At, as an example here we go so right now we have created the component that will handle the errors right now that the task that we should do is actually just a repeated task to call this uh, from every exception that, that that we have to call that so how we are going to provide this to make this available as a cascading parameter for every component we should go to the app.razor and surround the app with that. So we are going to take error, just like that. So right now, this component, as I've said, is available as a cascading parameter for every other component. So before I do anything, I will run the project and I will try to, to show actually a customized error and then uh, sorry a mocked error just to see how how it's responding right now and how we can make it uh, 
how we will handle that. So I'll go to plans or yeah, let's go to plans, open up the plan form, which is the place where we submit a form. And whenever we click submit, we are going to throw an error, like throw new argument uh, exception, as an example, invalid data, something like that. I'll put it over here, and then this one will be catched over there. So let's call that. Here we go, I will go to the add plan. And here we go. So right now, if I try to click save, okay, I have to fill the data first. Some title, description, some description. And we'll click save. And I will get invalid data. Like this is this is an exception that's that's a custom exception. So if I put it outside the try, I'm going to see this uh, yellow bar over here. But I want to handle all of this type of data in a different way. And the message that will be shown here is something coming from the server that says this plan already exists or it's not found or things like that, like things that makes more sense. So how I'm going to make this available for, in my case, I will over here add a cascading parameter, cascading parameter, public error, error, just like that. And over here, instead of doing this, I'll get rid of this and say error dot handle and pass the exception for it. So basically, this is it. I have this function, this is available for all the components as a cascading parameter. And yeah, like I can handle all of this stuff. And I also have fetch a plan by ID. Let's add that over here as well. For every play that you see an exception, uh, just the global exceptions, we should catch that in this way. So. I'll be basically right now going for every component and do the same. Add this cascading parameter and for every exception, I will add like exception EX. And whenever there is a place without this one, I should add this one and treat it the same way. So I'll go to add a plan and I will fill the title. I will click save and here we go something went wrong please try again later like we got an exception that's not we don't know from where it comes for example for my case like it's it's a generated one that I have done but basically as you can see we have invalid data at this one so we see but the user doesn't doesn't see this he just sees something went wrong because this is actually what happens like this is an unhandled error or we don't know like what is the main cause for that so we store that something away from the user for us as a log to know what's going on and we show him a message like something went wrong. So basically this is it. Right now we should do the exact same thing for every single component that contains error. So I'm going to do that right now. I will make the video like a little bit quick because it's a repeated process, nothing to explain. So yeah, I will go component by component and do this. So I'll start from.
So this is it. Right now, all my components is actually protected or uh, let's say not protected, but they are using the exact same error handler that I have defined at the top of my page, right? And uh, this is what we mean by handling all the errors from a single endpoint or like a global error handler that's actually fetching all the pages. We are going to make a, like a sh very short video at the end, which is like talking about the error boundaries and how we can leverage that power for us using uh, this amazing technology that will handle any error, even if it's not within a try catch. Like this one is just handling the error that within a try catch, but that one will catch any error across the application that happens and gives us the flexibility to show a custom page in the way that we want. Like it's a very powerful new components available. We should leverage that power. So this is everything for the video. Uh, right now, we cannot simulate an error actually to set that page, but uh, after I uh, did that little exception that you have seen in the form, like you can imagine any other exception that could happen, as I've said, no internet, server is totally down, like it's, it's not reachable, so it's not retrieving a meaningful error, just retrieving 500 or it's for some reason, then all of that would show something went wrong and then we store that reason behind the scenes in the console. As I've said, you can send it to the server or do whatever you want. So this is everything. For the next session, we are going to see or to talk about globalizations and some another cool topic. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.